Tom Hanks is a series of true life documentaries about a robot intent on world domination one Academy Award at a time. Robo Tom comes in many makes and models, like Extended Vacation Tom, Do a Barrel Roll Tom, and even one that runs on Windows. In Finch, the latest installment in the cinematic Hangiverse, we catch up with Tom after he's completed his mission of conquering the world. But being one of the last bipeds standing still isn't enough for him, and so he creates his very own robot, Jeff, to continue enslaving living creatures after his impending deactivation. This is Gamey Builds, and today we're going to make our very own version of Tom's Tom. In my previous two builds, I had a lot of leeway with the design and could pretty much indulge whatever whim came along, but since this one isn't springing from my imagination, it required careful attention to the original robot's design. After collecting a few useful references from Google, I quickly sketched out a blueprint to work from. Looking back, I'm not sure this was even necessary as I could have just used the photos as they were, but I guess they were too blurry or something I honestly can't recall and I think these epoxy fumes I've been inhaling may be to blame. <coughs> if you're a Gunpla builder, you may want to look away now and possibly avoid this video because this build came at the cost of one secondhand Bandai Ale Strike Gundam kit. If it seems like cheating to use a robot to make a robot, you're not wrong, but stick around because I think you'll be impressed at how I'm able to turn such a sturdy and intricately designed plastic machine into basically something that will fall apart if you look at it wrong. Starting with the feet, I'm doing some modification here and there to better recreate the smaller details, along with adding bulges and rivets and plugging up those ghastly foot wounds with cardstock caps. Because Gundams are built to be well balanced and highly poseable, they feature big heavy feet. The proportions aren't right for Jeff though, so everything else will need to be enlarged to fit them, starting with his ankles. I'm adding bits of metal wire and plastic tubes to his robo tibia to elongate them. This Lego Technic bendy tube is used to detail the pistons, and I can't be the only one getting Wallace and Gromit techno trouser vibes here, right? Jeff also features an interesting V-shaped piston design for his ankles. The metal rods are straightened paper clips and the plastic tubes are Q-tips. While the original Gundam is tough and muscular, Jeff is a timid and scrawny little guy, so we need to emasculate him a bit, starting with these chunky calves. This also gives us a flat surface to glue some greeblies onto. For the inside of the cabs, I remove those plastic nubs and fake some giant screws with layers of hole punched cardstock. I then added screw grooves with a razor. Some of Jeff's trim bits are also getting repurposed here as kneecaps. Small chunks of rubber erasers are added to fill in the gaps. I use the same method to extend the length of Jeff's thighs, adding lengths of wire and plastic tubes onto the pre-existing Gundam joints. The wire here is the needle from my airbrush which was bent during the last project. To bulk up the skeleton, I'm using a plain old rubber eraser. I pre-drilled a hole in the center and then shaved a bit off the edges. One of Jeff's characteristic elements that I really enjoy are these little metal brace things found on some of his limbs. I especially like the rubber tape stuff wrapped around the edges as it gives it a homemade feel, which suits the robot and the movie. I'm crafting these braces with chipboard here, then wrapping them in thin strips of masking tape to preserve that wrapping texture. Once wrapped, I coated it in a bit of Mod Podge to help solidify it and keep the tape from peeling. And then, after a bit of sanding to the plastic, I super glued them in place. For the top of the thigh joints, Jeff's got these bulky pieces covered in stretched fabric. To achieve this effect, I'm using Sculpey Air Dry Clay. This is the first time I've worked with this stuff, and while it's definitely trickier than normal oven-baked Sculpey, I'm pleased with the results. Next it was time to work on the hips. Here's the original mechanical diaper from the Gundam. It's much too small for Jeff though. He needs adult sized pens. And I've always found that to be a questionable brand name for that particular product. I split the hips in half and then spaced them apart with this old container for razor blades. 
To attach it to the torso, I added some tubes and eraser chunks were inserted for stability. After other smaller detailing, it looked like this. This black jetpack thing will make a great torso base, and these vents will serve as whatever, whatever this is. And maybe this is a rack for hard drives? Let's call it that, a rack for hard drives. The hard drives themselves were simple enough to craft out of cardstock, after which they were inserted into the rack. I also added a bit of detail to the top of the rack with these cut plastic paper clips. To bulk out this section of Jeff's torso a bit further, I'm adding these parts from the sacrificial Gundam and feeling thankful that he checked yes on his organ donor card. Jeff's got this interesting looking chest piece that I fashioned out of yet more recycled Gundam pieces, along with the cap of a marker, bifurcated with my Dremel. I didn't glue it on just yet though, since I knew I'd be handling the torso a lot more to attach the shoulders and arms, so we'll put it on later. Jeff's got a very unique arm design that consists of two parallel bars that attach to the shoulder joints and move independently from the body. I wanted to capture that in the model, so I used these old toy bits that I picked up for an old scratch model at the local thrift store. A great way to poison yourself is seen here. Light a candle and move the plastic slowly over the flame, being sure to inhale as much of the fumes as possible. You might even get lucky and actually bend the plastic a bit to your will. I'm joking of course, don't actually breathe these fumes in, but hey, how do you like Jeff's bling? I feel like this needs to come with a spray on tan and a protein shake. Hey, not bad, right? All we need is a bit more bling, coming to you courtesy of this paperclip. And now we move on to the shoulders. I'm cutting the shoulder rotors out of chipboard, as I figured this would provide more surface area to stick to than trying to glue two slim pieces of plastic together. Here's a pro tip. When gluing, plastic is never as adhesive as paper. And here's another pro tip, never travel with Tom Hanks. Of course, the only issue with using paper is that it looks like paper, so we'll need to hide it in a generous helping of plastic, preferably of the circular variety. Purple Legos are a disgrace to humanity, so I put this one out of its misery and let Jeff absorb its life force. And now, rivets added as per my usual method of hole punching cardstock with a leather punch and then gluing on the punched circles. I also plugged up some holes with these screws, which came out of the RC car from my pod racer build. Onto the arms. To extend each piece of the arms, I'm adding Q-tip rods. They weren't quite thick enough though, so I wrapped them in just a sliver of electrical tape to get a snug fit, then applied glue. I'm using random bits laying around my desk to extend the forearms here. Then using the same method as the thigh caps, I used air dry Sculpey to make the bulky bits on the arms. I'd show more of this footage, but my camera decided that whatever was happening in the background was a lot more interesting than my sculpting, so it just focused on that. I spent kind of a stupid amount of time contemplating how to attach the arms. In the end, I settled for a weird Y-shaped brace thing made of copper wiring that would then plug into each of the shoulder sockets on the arms. I'm pretty sure if Bandai saw what I was doing to their gorgeously designed Gundam, I would be banned from ever purchasing their products again. This is the equivalent of turning a Ferrari into a taco truck. <laughs> but wait, there's more. <laughs> the left brace doesn't even match the one on the right because the arms attach at different points and angles. <laughs> Not to worry though, let's just hide that shoddy craftsmanship in a cockroach nest of meaningless wires. And here's a screenshot I captured on my phone of the movie Finch because I noticed this interesting detail with Jeff's back. I'm building my version with beads and this bracelet that my wife donated to the cause. She will be aware of this donation upon viewing this video. I've no idea what purpose this thing serves for Jeff. Just like I have no idea what purpose it served Apple to disable the screenshot button on my Mac once you buy a movie from them. I really miss the old days when after paying for something you actually owned it. This bit here was oddly soothing. I thoroughly enjoyed adding these tiny custom beads to the paper clips. I was so calm in fact that I wrote you a haiku. Haikus are simple, but sometimes also jarring. Smash like and subscribe!
So somehow, the pieces all actually fit together. I was honestly so surprised that you could hear me gasp in the original audio. Because after the chest plate was finally glued in place, this meant that it was time for the final two pieces, the hands and head. But actually the hands weren't just one piece, and not even two, but 30 separate pieces since each of the finger joints were individual. All this was sculpted from regular oven bake Sculpey. Once baked, I glued all the pieces together and then sanded and carved them down where they were uneven. To attach them to the rest of Jeff, I drilled little holes in the wrists and slid them onto the paper clips I'd left jutting out of the forearms. Jeff seems pretty pleased with things so far. Jeff's head was also sculpted from clay. After all the other design nightmares and mistakes, this was a wonderfully straightforward process of just rolling this piece of clay into this approximate shape, and let's just forget those eye things because it's going to be way too hard to achieve that level of detail at such a small scale. <sighs> okay, okay, I can do this. For the last week or so, I was constantly disassembling pens and small plastic toys, looking for something that could work. In the end, I settled on these mechanical pencil orifices. Next, it was time to attach the eyes, which required the terrifying step of shaving away a big chunk of Jeff's head. I was so worried that the eye sockets wouldn't line up, but in the end, I think I did okay, even if it did require some extra surgery with an X-Acto. Once the eyes were glued and some plastic tubes were added to fill in the holes, I joined a neck socket from some plastic pen hardware onto the head and added, you guessed it, rivets, and a paperclip neck. I next turned to my new friend, Air Dry Clay, to build out the rest of the eye gear. Lastly, I extended Jeff's lenses with some plastic tubing from a mini spray bottle. Then it was time to add some more tubing to Jeff's neck, along with some wires. Once all that was done, it was time to prime. Check out my top of the line, very expensive painting rack made by Budweiser. I'm priming here with this acrylic airbrush paint, flat black. For the tan stretched fabric parts, I painstakingly masked off all the limbs, then airbrushed this warm gray onto the surface. It took quite a few layers, but once it was done, I removed the masking tape and added the same color to those wrapped brace things on Jeff's thighs. This color was added by brush. Next, using the same method as my last build, I started building up layers of color, gradually getting lighter with each layer. I started with this dark gray, dry brushed onto the surface. Dry brushing is a technique that first soaks the brush in paint, then squeezes out most of it so that only a very small amount of paint is deposited onto the surface of the model, usually the edges, which is what we want here to preserve the dark in the recessed areas. I airbrushed Jeff's gloves too, using this brown color. And yes, this airbrush is terrible and is constantly clogged with paint, making this process a lot more painful than it ought to be. But hey, that's what you get for $20. For Jeff's head, I'm mixing dark and light red and then applying by airbrush. Next, to achieve a sun bleached effect that's shown in the movie, I mixed a little yellow into the red and dry brushed it onto the parts that would absorb the most UV radiation. Then it was time for some other color accents, like this dark green seen sporadically on Jeff's shoulders. A bit more color, this time red for the wires. Now for the metal bits, my absolute favorite part of the painting process. Copper for these calf braces, and the out of focus feet, and silver for tons of other places. Jeff's head was painted last with a bit more of that orange red dry brushed on, along with that yellow grating bit between his eyes. One of the things that appeals to me about Jeff's design is the worn nature of it all. I always prefer the rusty, lived-in sci-fi look to the pristine designs of some movies. We're adding a chip paint effect here with the sharp end of a popsicle stick and a dab of silver paint. 
And once that was accomplished, it was time to boot him up. Well, no project is perfect and Jeff was no exception, but I'm still happy with it. It was interesting to me that the things that I expected to be challenging weren't, but the things I thought would be easy were absolute nightmares, like adding the arms to the body. But then again, life's like a box of chocolates, you never know what you're going to fret. As always, a big thanks for watching, and come back next time when I attempt to build something completely different from these last three builds. I'm nervously excited about it. So until then, this is Gamey Builds, over and out.